Hey everyone, so my last video was me talking about how we hadn't gotten any new ships or vehicles this year, and just this Friday we happened to get a new vehicle. So in today's video, I'm going to go over what's going on for Star Citizen St. Patrick's Day celebration this year, and also just talk about the current state of ground vehicles in Star Citizen. Before we start though, if you enjoyed this video or if you just want to support the channel, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. I really appreciate it. So for St. Patrick's Day each year, we usually get either a variant of a ship or a skin. So this year we have a deep green skin for the Mercury Star Runner, adding to its already pretty large collection of skins that it has available. Now personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this color, and I think it's a bit expensive at $11, but at least this does give you an opportunity to get or upgrade to the Star Runner if you missed out on the other chances to do so. Now the bigger news for this celebration is the all new vehicle, which is a new Cyclone variant. So the Cyclone already had 5 versions, which I'm going to be showing later in this video, but now there's another. So this one's called the MT, and it's a bit of a combination of the Cyclone AA, the anti-air variant with missiles, and the TR, which has a manned turret. So based on the Q&A, which I'll have linked below along with the sale page, it looks like it comes equipped with 4 size 2 missiles and 1 size 1 weapon, and these can be swapped out for whatever fits on those hard points. Now there was one question in the Q&A that I liked in particular, which was why anyone would use the TR or AA now if it combines both of their features, and their answer was that the missiles on this cannot be operated by the driver like they can be on the AA. So yeah, you'll need either two people in this, or you'll have to park it somewhere and get in the turret to be able to use the weapons on it. As for pricing on this, it's quite high as usual, at $65 Warbond or 75 credit, but the Warbond version does come with LTI, so if you need another LTI token, this can be it. So this isn't going to be a Ballista competitor or anything, but 4 size 2s could repel some smaller ships, and it's much easier to transport a Cyclone than a Ballista anyway. Overall this isn't the most exciting addition, but now there's even more options in the Cyclone lineup and we'll be seeing this thing pretty soon in 3.13. So for this next part of the video, I wanted to show most of the wheeled ground vehicles and talk about their use in the game in the moment. Overall though, what you can do with them is pretty limited. The exception to this is the Grey Cat Rock, which can be one of the best ways to earn money in the verse if you manage to avoid bugs while you're using it. However, I've already made a lot of videos on it, so I'm not really going to be including it today. For the rest of the vehicles though, I can really only think of one actual use besides racing them or just messing around with them, which can be fun. Let me know in the comments if you have any missions or situations where you think a ground vehicle is useful, but the only one that comes to mind for me are these bunker missions. You can get these around Hurston, or sometimes on the moons around Arc Corp, and for most of these missions the objective is to go inside one of these bunkers, which did take a while to load in here, and then take out a number of enemies that are inside of it. However, most of the time that you do these, there's going to be some anti-air turrets on the ground, and with the recent changes to these, they're actually pretty dangerous. At close range, these turrets can do a ton of damage even to something with medium shields. They're pretty accurate since you're not that far away from them, and they're also pretty hard to take out. That's partially due to the targeting being kind of bugged on them, so it's very difficult to hit your shots on the turrets. But also, if you stay still long enough to line up your shot, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. So I think the best way to deal with these turrets is to just not do it in your ship, and land somewhere where they can't hit you. Now you can see here that when I do that though, I'm 2 kilometers away from the bunker, which would be a pretty big hike on foot. Also, just a quick tip, remember to turn off your engines before loading and unloading vehicles, or else this might happen. But yeah, that 2 kilometer trip is a lot better if you have a vehicle to travel in. Now thankfully the anti-air turrets don't target ground vehicles at the moment, because if they did, you'd probably be worse off in any vehicle until we get the tank next patch. But because of that, if you're doing these missions solo, you can bring just about any vehicle, since it only really needs to be able to transport you to the bunker and then back to your ship. I wouldn't really recommend the PTV though, it would be kind of tough to drive it around on this terrain. However, if you bring something like the Ursa over here with its remote turret, you can actually take out these ground turrets. If you brought someone with you on one of these missions, that gives you the potential to do something cool like drop in the vehicle while flying over the bunker, have it take out the turrets, and then land near the bunker without having to drive any sort of long distance. Unfortunately, these missions don't really have the payouts to justify that kind of setup if you're doing missions to try to earn credits, but it still does sound like a lot of fun, and I think I'll have to try it out at some point in the future. Beyond that one mission type though, there's not really much use for these vehicles right now. I hope in the future that they add terrain that makes it so that it's hard to land ships but easy to drive places, because these vehicles are really well made, and they could be a lot of fun with the reason to use them. One other thing they could do is have some sort of resupply mission on the ground, possibly into a cave or something. The Ursa rover and the base cyclone can carry 1-2 to two SCU of cargo, and it would be fun to have a mission to go resupply someone in a hard to reach area. Despite not having many practical uses, the vehicles are nice in that they're a lot of fun to use and cost barely any credits in game. 
With just an hour or two of bounty hunting, you could probably buy every ground vehicle, and you definitely could if you skip either the Ballista or Rock, which are both slightly more expensive. But yeah, the whole Cyclone lineup is 28,000 Alpha UEC each, and the capable Ursa Rover is only 70,000 credits. Now the Rock is a little bit more, like I said, at 172,000 Alpha UEC, but you can earn that back pretty quickly with a few mining runs. And then the Ballista is a bit expensive at 364,000 credits, but it does give you a lot of firepower, and you'll actually be able to bring it around to different places once we get the Hercules. If you're looking to buy any of these, they're all conveniently available to purchase at the New Deal at Lorville, and all the Cyclone variants are actually here now, now that Levski no longer exists, at least in Stanton. So I just want to give a little look around all of these vehicles for you guys, so you know what you're getting if you do decide to pick one up. Starting with the base cyclone, these are pretty fast and compact vehicles, and this variant has room for two passengers and one SU of cargo in the back. This one is the only one that's available to rent, and you can rent it for just 500 Alpha UEC at Lorville. However, since they're all the same price, and being able to carry cargo in a ground vehicle isn't that useful yet, if you're only going to get one, I wouldn't get this one. Next we have the Cyclone RN, which is the reconnaissance focus variant. This one also has space for two passengers, like all of the Cyclones, but it doesn't have any cargo capacity since that space is taken up for the scanner. I think this vehicle will be pretty cool in the future, when scanning is actually in the game and you can go around searching for wrecks or whatever with this thing, but for now it doesn't really do anything, so I'd put it in the same category as the base variant. Next we have the RC, which is the racing variant of the Cyclone. This one is very fast and it's a lot of fun to drive. It also has that room for one passenger and no cargo space, but it's my favorite of the Cyclones, partially just because of this red paint job. And then here we have the first of the weaponized Cyclones. So the TR has the rear area replaced with a man turret, and it comes with a size 1 Gatling by default. Unfortunately, you do need to be in the turret to use this, so you can't use the turret as the driver, but this does mean you have spots for three people in this vehicle, which is more than a lot of ships, even. The last cyclone that is in the game at the moment is the AA, and like I mentioned earlier, this has four size 2 missiles, and you can actually use them as the driver. Again, this is no ballista, but it's kind of cool to have somewhat decent armament on this small and fast vehicle. Moving on, we have the Grey Cat PTV here, which is basically Star Citizen's golf cart. It still does go pretty fast, but for now this thing isn't that useful, since the terrain on most planets and moons is pretty rough and it can't really deal with it all that well. I do hope someday though that these get placed in the XL sized hangars, because getting to your ship in those things can be quite a hike. Here we have the Grey Cat Rock, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. If you're not, this is a small mining vehicle that can mine and collect little gems on the surface of planets and moons, and hopefully in caves soon. You can actually rent these now, and I think it's one of the best ways to get started making credits in the verse, if you're willing to deal with a few more glitches than usual. And then here is the Ursa Rover. This is what I was using earlier on in this video, and if you have the space in your ship for this, it's a lot of fun and very well rounded. It has space in the rear for either 4 passengers with these fold down seats, or 2 SCU of cargo. Up front it has a driver and a passenger seat, and you get to control this cool retractable remote turret as the driver, and it comes with 2 size 1 hardpoints. So this is a bit bigger than the Cyclones, and it won't fit in stuff like the Cutlass or Nomad, but it is one of the more complete ground vehicles in the game, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to take on expeditions at some point. And then last but not least, we have the Ballista. Like I mentioned earlier, this thing is a pain to take anywhere right now, since the 890 is currently the only vehicle that can fit it until we have the Hercules. And while it's not really needed for anything right now, in the future it's going to be an amazing anti-air vehicle. It has 8 size 5 missiles and 2 size 7s, which is a lot of firepower, and it can deal with some pretty big ships using those. It also has a remote turret with 2 size 2 Gatlings, so it'll be able to deal with ground-based threats pretty easily as well. So yeah, at the moment this thing is a pain to get anywhere, and not much use, but if at some point you fly over one, you better get out of there fast if it starts locking onto you. So that's all I have for this video. Let me know your thoughts on ground vehicles in the comments, and how you'd like to see CIG create a use case for them. 
it's hard to find a way to make them useful in a game where our ships are already so capable, but I think it would be a shame if vehicles continued to collect dust like they do now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.